Well, I actually have a, an NGO based in Brussels that I around the topic of inclusive digital transformation, which means um, we do a lot of grassroots initiatives targeting girls and women with digital and entrepreneurship skills because we realize there are no female tech founders and this is like the weakest link. So we teach girls to um, use technology and use creativity. Um, we do kind of startup weekends, but we don't call it that. There are hackathons, but we don't call it that, that target teen and adult women. And we give them like a social mission, but we also actually teach them to code smartphones. We teach them to build websites as part of the weekend. And then they, we give them a mission to work on, like women in media or uh, with women refugees. And over the course of the weekend, then, they build their skills, they launch projects, they address a, a critical social need. And before they know it, they're already in a startup, a tech-oriented start, startup mindset, which is seriously lacking, as, as you said. For the moment, we're piloting the work that we do in Brussels, but we organize events everywhere. Uh, we've done events in the U.S. and in uh, Central America. We've partnered with organizations that are based here in Spain, um, also all over Europe. We have a very extensive network, and actually we're, at the, we're a startup ourselves. So I've been working on this topic for seven years, but our organization has only existed for two years. And all of the initiatives that we're running are really um, built to be able to replicate and scale them. So we would love to do like what we call this Move It Forward weekend in Barcelona, for example, or... Um, the cities and yes. to spread all the initiatives exactly. all, all over And we're actually, we're actually working with the city network called uh, Metropolis and some, some women in the Barcelona government who are very keen around this topic, actually connecting the cities through women politicians and trying to activate the network and scale it that way. And what is the methodology? Do you have workshops? Do you share? Which is the way you are developing your initiative? It is, well, by trial and error. So we do things and we see what works because you're tackling a lot of serious social challenges and a lot of conditioning and um, stereotypes that are perpetuated constantly, as you see in events like this, that can be very intimidating. So we have to really lower the, the barrier to entry as low as we possibly can. Um, so everything that we do, we iterate and iterate over and over till we get the feel just right for the demographic that we're targeting. And then we build in skills development, indeed. It's also about community development. So just because a woman has a set of digital skills and is keen to start up, if she doesn't have another group of other women who want to do the same thing or who want to do it with her or, or a group of men who want to support her to do this, she will stall at the at the starting block so skills and community development we also do a lot of top-down awareness and advocating yes because we're based in brussels so this means we can showcase the things that we're doing at the policy level as well and in fact one of my uh, supporters for being here today is the european commission because they're also starting to acknowledge the economic value or the, the missed economic opportunity that this represents to not have women in tech startups. Which is even beyond the, the economic issue. And the exactly. way you're doing and thinking live and the, the vision of women, I think, is yes. different. It's more um, sustainable. It's more about slow, positive, incremental growth that is not volatile, that is not disruptive. Um, it's actually a new model, I think, for the economy, even globally, that is really much more how Europe works. Um, but when we talk about venture capital, we look at Silicon Valley as the, you know, as the golden path, we start to throw away this kind of social democratic ideal, I think, that is 
really our unique uh, offering to the world uh, is sustainable growth. Um, and I miss this in, in the conversation about Europe. I miss it in the conversation in local governments and national governments. And I think it's also because we don't have the women in the leadership in those places either, or in the media where, where these issues are being covered. So it's a, it's a global challenge, um, and I'm just working on it in my little tiny space where I hope I can make a difference. Could you tell us uh, some, not results, but some success during these two years? Have you seen this uh, improvement from the beginning? Yes, you know, one of the things that I'm actually the most proud of is we've now run three of these Move It Forward weekends uh, targeting teen and adult women um, for female tech startup. As I said, without calling it this, we say female digital starters. So we talk about beginners, we don't talk about tech, we don't talk about startup, like I told you, but this is exactly what we're doing. And out of each of those events, we've had, each time, we've had eight projects that are treated during the weekend. Um, we have a handful who are recognized, um, they do a pitch session, um, and they, they receive incubation from us. Um, and I would say out of the three events that we've run, um, we've reached 100 or 110 teen and adult women, um, probably about 50 nationalities because we're based in Brussels, which means you immediately have a very diverse population of women, even among the women. Um, and to date, maybe 15 projects that are in different forms of viable yes so so actually up until now we've been successful at getting the sponsorship for the events now we're looking for the investment for the incubator and this is where people's eyes glaze over once again we have the same challenges as all the rest of the startups here um, but I'm confident that we're doing something different um, that we're tackling a really big challenge and so I hope that we can also find the investors that have the same kind of vision as us and who will get behind this kind of network thinking um, to stimulate female tech entrepreneurship even globally. It's and it takes time. It's not something Yes, fast, this is the thing. The way economics exactly. or the male vision of doing business. I think this is a more... So um, you, can, you can really appreciate the challenge that I'm up against because we have that vision, it's long term, we know we have to start small, we're also looking at incremental positive change and we need support for that. So this is a very, very difficult... We're, we're tackling many challenges simultaneously. But we do have these nice success stories, one of which I'd like to share with you that's called the Women Refugee Route. So we did one Move It Forward event uh, with and for women refugees and asylum seekers in Europe. And the kind of top project that came out of that was just a, a platform run on a smartphone to do an intake of women refugees when they arrive in the centers and to, um, to give them access to networks for health care, for child care, for jobs, for um, sa safe housing. Um, and this is, I think, a really typical example of the kinds of work that women can do with other women using technology to, to um, make a positive impact. And I really hope that, for example, we can get proper funding behind that project. And, of course, their success is our success. So, um, so I'm very motivated. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard. It's hard. But it's <laughs> like him, there are a lot of men who is uh, uh, taking aware about this challenge. This right. is a global challenge. Thank goodness. They need to be more vocal because I think until that happens, it's a bunch of women screaming in a vacuum, and that's not the answer. I think this came up in our panel today was um, swarming, is what the gentleman on the panel said, so swarming around bad behavior and sanctioning. Absolutely. And this means men also have to say, this is not okay. 
And one of my comments about the recent Uber discussion of a, of a uh, female software engineer there, one of my comments on a Facebook post was that men are also shutting up mm -hmm. and and backing away in the interest of their own careers, which is understandable. Absolutely. I think they also have these kinds of economic pressures, familial pressures even. Um, but this is actually where we need to d diffuse the problem, is uh, men themselves also saying, this cannot happen, and this woman cannot be the victim of that kind of behavior, because all of the good things that have happened in the workforce, actually more flexible working, remote working, um, have happened because of greater diversity in the workforce, from which men also benefit. Absolutely. And um, that's also a message that they have to take and they have to also stand behind and even deliver, even police it and mm -hmm. sanction where... Um, it concerns about him as well. Yes. It's not only a women's problem, I think. Right. Uh, well, I think everyone. when you saw like the causes of the economic crisis, um, the, the research out of the UK said that actually all the perpetrators are psychopaths. Mm. So what you have in yeah, yeah. So traditional, um, you know, career economic, paths yeah. is economic that we are model. rewarding very bad behavior. Mm. So until the point that we start to sanction that bad behavior, we're not going to see a change. Absolutely. Right.